I'm Dr. Hendrik Ruiz, and the title of my talk is Hyperchlorous Acid and Surgical Gauze An Effective Simplified Wound Treatment Protocol. What is hypochlorous acid? This is a powerful medical grade non toxic solution that combats infection, biofilm, inflammation, and wound exudate. Hypochlorous acid is used with surgical gauze. Surgical gauze delivers the hypochlorous acid, which has a formula of HOCl, to the wound. It absorbs wound exudate and it debrides the wound. Trifectiv is a medical grade non toxic hypochlorous acid solution that is for the treatment of any wound. Average healing is 70% faster than with standard of care. The average cost of dressing is very inexpensive, around $1.50. Daily dressings is advised. Patients participate in their treatment, which increases their compliance. The total cost of treatment with daily dressings is in excess of 50% less expensive. The first patient advantages are that of infection control and biofilm control and wound odor stops usually within 24 hours. Inflammation control on the other hand is the reason for less pain in the wound and no wound exudate. It takes on average three days for wound exudate to stop due to inflammation control. This again improves patient compliance. There are many indications for the use of Trifective Plus. These include acute and chronic wounds, diabetic ulcers and venous ulcers, burns, insect bites, even diaper rash, or as we call it, nappy rash, skin and nail infections, surgical wounds, wound, wound irrigation with um, the replacement of joints, and therefore the whole spectrum of wounds respond well to this protocol. This is how hypochlorous acid kills bacteria. It is a non-toxic but physical destruction of the bacteria. You can literally see how they explode in the presence of hypochlorous acid. The role of inflammation in wound healing has been described in the journals. In short, acute wounds are not inflamed and chronic wounds are locked in inflammation and have an exudate. The limiting factor therefore is inflammation and if we can control infection, biofilm and inflammation, the wound will heal. Inflammation is caused by infection and biofilm. You will remember the pathogenesis of wounds that start with infection, then form this complex form of infection called biofilm. This is responsible for inflammation and wound exudate. And this is how we know chronic wounds. Inflammation is, of course, evident as redness, pain, swelling and heat and wound exudate. This is an example of a young girl. She's three years old and she fell into a fire and has full thickness and partial thickness burns on the left side of her neck. The simplicity of this type of wound treatment, as we call it the trifective protocol, includes just using surgical gauze and trifective non-toxic hypochlorous acid. The dressings are done by wetting the gauze, placing it on the wounds and replacing it every day. The gauze swabs are usually moist the next day and we taught the mother how to do these dressings. So she went home, did the dressings daily at home, and within three weeks, there was complete resolution of the wound with no scarring. The significance is the lack of scarring. And this has been described, how hypochlorous acid provides for wound healing with very little scar tissue formation. Another burn, this time of the wrist, this is an oil burn. 
So this patient was treated completely with um, the help of telemedicine. Um, the dead skin or necrotic skin in the first picture was gradually removed by daily dressings consisting of wetted surgical gauze, wetted with trifective hypochlorous acid. And as the dressings are removed daily to replace them, the gauze clings to necrotic tissue and dead biofilm and gradually the debridement is completed and healing progresses satisfactorily. On the third picture at the top there is slight bleeding that occurs and when this happens the patient is advised to put one layer of paraffin gauze over the wound before the wetted surgical gauze is placed, wetted with trifective. The dressings are usually retained with a Kreb bandage, that is a breathable bandage that allows the gauze to become from wet to moist over 24 hours. And when the gauze is then removed the next day, any non-viable tissue will usually cling to the gauze. Once we start putting a single layer of paraffin gauze over the wound, like on the third picture right top, there is a limited debridement that happens, but we know here that debridement is complete and that the, um, the wounds will heal satisfactorily, again, with no excessive scarring. Diaper rash, or nappy rash, as it's called, is biofilm infection. So this starts with infection, and then the complex biofilm infection follows. And applying hypochlorous acid to the area on each nappy change usually causes for very quick resolution of this type of infection and uh, suppression of or modulation of inflammation also um, immediately controls pain for these babies. In this case there is infection of hair follicles behind the head uh, with biofilm infection. We know that there is biofilm infection because you can see the, um, the areas of inflammation here. Once treatment starts, usually within three days by just spraying hypochlorous acid on these wounds, the biofilm is brought under control, inflammation is brought under control, and the, um, the, the situation is completely resolved. Staphylococcal infection can also be treated by spray application. The antibacterial, antibiofilm and anti-inflammatory action of hypochlorous acid um, is responsible for quick resolution of a problem like this. Mothers usually become very concerned when their young children fall and sustain injuries in the facial area. In this case, there is a scraping wound with inflammation on the right side of the face of this child, um, which resolved very quickly within three days by application of non-toxic hypochlorous acid. Vasculitis, or chilblains as it's called, or Raynaud's disease, um, is an inflammatory condition that is especially prevalent in the colder winter months. Hypochlorous acid was sprayed three times a day on the hand with complete resolution. Diabetic ulcers also respond well to dressings with hypochlorous acid on gauze. Gradual, conservative, slow debridement makes it possible for patients to treat their own wounds at home. Um, as in this case, over a period of 100 days, in the last picture, there was um, offloading by filing away a thickened layer of uh, epidermal um, dead cells, and, um, and the patient was also referred for orthopedic shoes. This is how a th 
in three dimensions how a wound closes with secondary intentions intention by daily dressings with hypochlorous acid on cause inflammation is under control and the wound closes in uh, in this case in around 40 days This demonstrates how a wound with a cavity should be treated with hypochlorous acid and gauze. Wetted gauze must be plugged into the cavity. Like all cavity wounds, they should be plugged and then the lower leg should be treated with an elastic dressing to provide for compression in the, if there is any swelling present. The protocol of treatment with hypochlorous acid and gauze is very simple. The dressings consist of just surgical gauze that does not need to be sterile, it just needs to be clean, soaked with the hypochlorous acid, in this case trifective. Retention of the gauze is through a cray bandage or a breathable dressing, in this case primapore. This allows for the um, dressing to dry out slightly over the period of 24 hours uh, in it is then removed in which case it will debride any non-viable tissue which is an extremely important part of wound treatment we do provide for compression dressings in the case of lower leg injuries uh, if any swelling is present because swelling is a direct a competition to healing due to the limited um, ability of the small blood vessels to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the area. Monitoring successful treatment with hypochlorous acid is simplified by the fact that it is only the wound we look at and the gauze that comes off the wound that we look at. We look at the wound in terms of inflammation control, in other words, the redness, pain, swelling and heat of the wound, if that diminishes. And when we look at the gauze, we look at the amount and the appearance of wound exudate. A wound that responds will show diminished inflammation and diminished exudate on a daily basis. On average, it takes about three days for wound exudate to stop. Wound observation in this case depicts inflammation in a non-healing wound on the shin area. You can clearly see the inflammation around the wound. This wound is locked in inflammation and will not heal. Daily treatment takes care of biofilm that causes the inflammation. It suppresses the inflammation and the wound starts to heal. Observation of the gauze dressing on the left hand side reveals pseudomonas infection and this is usually a case of not using enough hypochlorous acid with the dressings. When patients use hypochlorous acid and dressings at home it sometimes happens that they use too little of the solution in which case infection can start. This patient was advised to use more um, hypochlorous acid and to soak at least five dressings properly uh, before closing it with a cray bandage and on this follow-up photo you see the result um, of control of the pseudomonas infection after a day or two. This is what dead biofilm looks like. One should not forget that debridement of dead biofilm is extremely important um, and it cannot be done in any other way than, than by surgical gauze um, daily dressings. If bleeding starts when a gauze dressing is removed, and this is another case depicting bleeding on dressing change, this is when a single layer of paraffin gauze is placed on the wound before the wetted gauze dressing to stop um, bleeding from happening. So do we use gauze or do we use gauze plus paraffin gauze? 
Remember that paraffin gauze stops the bridement. The moment you start using paraffin gauze to stop the gauze dressing from clinging to any necrotic material, no further debridement will happen. And this is in contrast to our um, um, ability to heal the wound very quickly. We do not use paraffin gauze if there's any debridement that still needs to happen. We use at least five sheets of gauze and at least five milliliters of uh, non-toxic medical grade trifecta of hypochlorous acid solution. And remember, if any cavity in a wound exists, it must be plugged. The wetted gauze needs to be in contact with all areas inside a wound to affect healing. A few examples of a very common injury, a declubbing injury in an um, old person uh, that fell. Usually it takes around a month of daily dressings to heal this completely. Um, when an injury like this arrives at the office, you usually do not know if, if it must, uh, if the dead skin, if the skin is dead and non-viable, should it be debrided? Should not. But we simply use the wetted gauze um, protocol with cray bandages and the wound is uh, resolved over a period of time as any non-viable tissue would eventually cling to the gauze and come off the wound and viable tissue would not. Various examples all with the same result. In this case, it's not possible to do a dressing due to the difficulty of uh, daily dressings over the face and over the nose area. Simple application by spray on of the hypochlorous acid will have the same effect. It would just take a little longer than if a dressing was done, but the convenience factor makes it worthwhile just to do the spray on application. A little bit more about hypochlorous acid. Hypochlorous acid naturally occurs in the white blood cells of the human being, uh, and it is there to fight infection and heal wounds. Usually when we have a wound, there would be an inflammatory response calling for the white blood cells to come to the area, and then the hypochlorous acid inside the white blood cells, which occur as small little vacuoles, are the released uh, to kill bacteria and to initiate healing. A very important aspect of this release of hypochlorous acid is the modulation of inflammation. So having hypochlorous acid in a non-toxic form in a bottle makes it possible to accelerate the healing process in exact by augmenting the body's own response. There are, however, different ways of manufacturing hypochlorous acid and it's important to point out that the most common method that are in place that is the electrolysis of salt normal um, table salt leaves toxic residues in the solution it is important to use a non-toxic hypochlorous acid solution um, as is used here um, in, in, in by trifective it is the only medical grade hypochlorous acid solution with no toxic ingredients. This is an um, spectrophotometric analysis of uh, trifective showing a large spike of hypochlorous acid and the average salt solution has a very small spike of hypochlorous acid that is also um, in, in a solution that is not pure and even contains some toxic components like chlorate. Thank you.